Hey there, dual sporters. I've got something exciting to show you. My brand new 2021 CRF 300L. All right. All right, dual sporters, in all seriousness, I wanted to make this video about the accessories that I've put on the CRF 300L. And um, of course, the first accessory that you should really think about is uh, living in Canada and having access to a, uh, a healthcare system that will fix your broken foot for free when you uh, drop the bike and do something dumb, like trying to do a wheelie. Uh, your second accessory, of course, is uh, gonna be the cast, the wrapping. Third accessory you'll, you'll need as part of your motorcycle adventure kit here is a uh, knee dolly. And uh, yeah, these are quite skookum. It's got uh, a drum brake in the rear. You can lock it out and a bell. These come in multiple colors, sizes. There's a range of pricing options. Just visit the Honda website and they'll help you out. All right, let's talk about the actual accessories on the bike. Maybe what I'll do is, is hold the camera and, and walk you around the bike as best I can here with my cripple self. Do you want to be the camera person? So let's start here at the front of the bike. Um, first thing I wanted to do was open up the cockpit a little bit. The ergonomics were a little tight with the stock bar. And so I went with um, the Pro Taper uh, Henry Reed bar. And you can see we've added onto that the Acer Bis hand guards. And these fit particularly well. So if you're wondering what hand guards will work well, these do. These are the two lines here running off the throttle, feed right through here with the grip. So that's awesome. You also need a different bar. Uh, the original bar is gonna have weights in the end. You're, you'll have to drill that out. Um, I've dropped the bike twice and that's really the only damage that was there and to the scraping the foot pig. Other than that, when the bike is lying on its side, there's no damage to the body works. So that, that's good news if you drop it on a level surface. You know what's gonna contact the road. Um, other things we added, we put on the Zeta levers and these are spring-loaded. So even though I've got the hand guards, um, these can go backwards if they're pushed that way and you can adjust them. They just look nicer than the stock ones, and the stock one was a bit long. I had to saw it off, and I thought, well, this just looks a little slicker. Um, you're going to have to adapt the uh, 7 8 bar to a, a 1 and 1 8 the fat bar. So these Pro Taper adapters will do that and give you a little more height on the bars. Uh, right here is a, this is a knockoff of the RAM mount, which you can find on Amazon. I'll put links in the description. You just clip your phone in here. What's nice about it, it has the wire for charging and uh, it's doing a good job so far. It's, it's pretty solid, you know, for 30 bucks as opposed to whatever RAM charges. So I've actually wired it into the ignition instead of the battery. So when I, when I shut the ignition off, it, the power goes off here and you're not gonna uh, drain your battery, which is awesome. To wire the phone charger to the bike, um, you're going to need an Honda accessory um, plug thing. I'll put it on the screen. And it's going to, I just ran the wire under here and then I connected it. Um, the, the nice thing is that um, you don't have to dig around or use any screwdrivers or whatever to take off the headlight of your motorcycle to access this. Honda has conveniently placed the accessory port here and it's just a matter of squeeze and plug you know, there's a little cap on it you just pull it off and it's right here and then find a way to um, crimp or attach that to the actual line that goes to the to the charger so thanks Honda for putting that in a good place another little accessory right here I keep this piece of Velcro loop for if and when you drop the bike and you're on a bit of a slope. What you can do with this, super handy for when you're picking your bike up, is to lock the front brake so that that wheel doesn't slide around on you. Actually that way. So I just keep that right there in handy. That has come in handy in the past. And 
another piece of Velcro up here that's been super handy is this one here. So when you get your bike, the brake line is going to be wobbling in front of your display, which is terribly annoying. And so the best solution that I can come up with is to have this little piece of Velcro, about a quarter inch. If you look inside, it's hard to see on camera, but inside here, there's a little hole in the plastic. Okay. And what I'm going to do is just overlap the Velcro by about a quarter inch so that in the 11 inches of travel, if this needs to move, um, that pressure is just going to release and the brake line's not, not unduly clamped down by say like a, a zap strap or something like that. All right, um, did some hunting for, for a good rack and found this one by a company called Precision and they specialize just in doing um, racks. The reason I chose this one is because of its compact size and um, I'm not going to take the bag off right now but if I did I'll show a picture on the screen. It's already pre-drilled with holes to take on a rotopack. So if you wanted to travel with more gasoline you've got a, you've, it's already designed to accommodate that and I could put my bag on top. Come around this way Teo and show the logo on the bag here. Uh, rig gear through the same uh, website. I'm sure you can get other other places but again it just tapers perfectly with this rack. And for a day ride, you've got enough space in here to carry um, what you need. You can also expand it a little bit. And what I really like about it is uh, it's fairly durable. And look here closely at the zippers. You'll see the zipper here, fairly rugged and uh, keeps the dirt out of there. So even after you've been splashing through some mud, you can still operate your zipper. Another thing to note is um, I did find cheaper bags out there, but they also have um, a clip and I, I tried using a camera bag on here for a while where you know you had a, a quick release plastic clip and with the amount of up and down and stuff on the trails those just snapped in no time. Recommend having a solid strap in place and that's the only reason I'm not unmounting it now it's just a little inconvenient it just takes a minute to undo it. All right on this side of the bike I added the Zeta uh, it's actually for the 250L, but it's the same engine block, so it fits. Thanks to Woodsman for letting me know, and I think this looks pretty cool. It's not quite the same red as the Honda, but it looks better than the black piece of plastic that was there. And the real issue with that is where I ride, sometimes there's mud, and it just cakes up and packs up in there and causes premature chain wear and corrosion, so um, this will be easier to clean out. I also removed the plastic chain um, cover and I like to see what's going on with the chain uh, as does my buddy Jim there back in Smithers and this way it's easier to clean and maintenance and just see exactly what's going on with the chain. Cool. Um, I replaced the foot pegs. Now these aren't substantially wider. Uh, what's the exact name of these? DRC foot pegs? And they're, they're steel so they're, they're not light. Um, they're just as heavy, if not a little bit heavier, than the stock pegs, but they're a fraction wider. Um, and, but they do have the center row of teeth. And I find having three rows of teeth really helpful and a wider peg just slightly more comfortable. If weight's an issue, you can look for a pair in aluminum and pay twice or three times as much money. Um, I did put side cases on the bike right here and on the other side. So hopefully in an impact, those will absorb the blow and not damage the side of the engine case. I did have a buddy, another one in Smithers, who uh, just dropped his bike, not necessarily at speed. And there was a boulder and it drove his brake pedal through the side of his engine on his DRZ 400. So that was not a fun day for him. So I'm hoping that will um, prevent that kind of thing. Um, and I think it looks pretty cool too. The side cases, they fit quite, quite snug. So you might find you need to trim a little bit of the plastic off the top. Um, otherwise, uh, like the top edge, otherwise they're a pretty good fit. And um, they do come with some double sided adhesive tape along the edges. And um, I decided to only do that in, in a few key spots in case I need to pry that off there sometime and I won't have a lot of goo to deal with. But the pressure enough seems to be holding those on well. 
The, for the skid plate, the first thing I did was the Yamoto one ordered through Biker Bits, and it was a good plate, but I found I was getting some resonance from it, and it's reflecting the sound of the engine back to me, which I didn't particularly like, so I ended up selling that one and going with the um, ARC. This is a plastic skid plate. It's lighter, it's going to slide over stuff instead of sticking, it's going to absorb sound rather than reflecting it, and then there's also this extra little piece here that you can get to protect um, the linkage there with the rear suspension. So I thought that was worthwhile as well. I'm not convinced I need protection for the rotors. I've been riding a number of years and never damaged one or bumped one, but I, I did want to protect the master cylinder here for the rear brake. This is a H2C, again through biker bits. And what else? I think we're getting to the end here. Hopping on one foot. Uh, poster child for why motorcycling can be dangerous. Um, this is the SRC Moto Rad Guard Protector. And I like the look of it and the fact that you can get it powder coated in black. I know it's dark out here, but it, it has a nice honeycomb look to it. And the only trick here is you might need a special tool or an extension on your ratchet to get it all the way from the outside to the inside to tighten those, um, tighten those bolts. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. There's some future items, you know, maybe some folding in uh, mirrors, but these work well. I like the look of them. So I'm kind of waiting until they break before I invest in uh, ones that fold in. And I'm looking to core grip. They're going to come out with um, some grip tape here that will hopefully wear better than the, the paint that comes out from the factory, which rubbed off almost right away. Uh, first couple of rides there with my boot. So there's a look at accessories thus far. The 2021 CRF 300L. Anyway, if you have any questions about any of those bits, leave a note down in the comments. Or if you found an accessory that you think is worthwhile. Uh, some people are doing suspension upgrades, but I'm going to leave that for now. As an intermediate rider at about 150 pounds, uh, it's great for me. It, it, once you start pushing it, it is a little springy. Um, but for you know the most normal kind of trail riding, um, you're not you're not racing um, it soaks up the bumps and it's pretty comfy so maybe as I become a more aggressive rider I might um, upgrade the suspension but other than that I've been having a good time on the bike and unfortunately that's a wrap that's a wrap on my season until spring until I heal some bones all right take care